Hello, and welcome to the Iaconian Archives. I am the Archivist, your host and reader. In this episode, I will be sharing an excerpt from From Beneath Us, It Devours, by author Cece Noda, a tale of horror from the IDW G1 universe. So pour yourself a glass of good, strong NGX, get comfortable at your console or in your berth, close your optics, and let's enter the archives. The Relic had a fairly impressive set of armaments for a neutral ship. Then again, Drift remembered the Decepticon and Autobot ships eager to blow anyone not specifically an ally out of the sky, and thought that if the more neutral ships had had this type of weaponry, the number of neutrals coming home after the war might have been higher. The Relic's arsenal hadn't saved it, though, so it was possibly a moot point after all. Using maps provided by Perceptor's initial success with the internal sensor network, Drift led the way toward the nearest of the externally mounted cannons. The small party had barely reached the weaponry when it became perfectly clear that not a single shot had been fired. The cannons were still in their inactive mode, barrels locked and covered. The nearby missile launchers had the remains of a full complement and Drift used the word remains in his mentally composed report because the cannons and their ammunition were as decayed as the rest of the ship. I don't think they went down fighting, Chrome Dome said. Not exactly, Drift answered, carefully moving bits of debris aside. Let's check the next one. The size of the ship notwithstanding, manually checking the relic's arsenal wasn't a quick job. Drift spent as much or more time cataloging damage to the relic's internal structures en route to the next section of hull as he did checking the cannons, all of which was markedly consistent. One section of floor gave way while they watched, crashing downwards and shaking more dust and debris out of the air. I'm not really sure this is safe, Chrome Dome muttered, although none of them had been in any particular danger. The unstable sections creaked and groaned before giving way, offering plenty of warning to anyone alert enough to pay attention. Of course it's still safe, Drift started to say, and then the airlock nearest to him, usually meant to serve as an exit port for the barrel of an active cannon, cycled open. Air rushed past, dragging him with it, and he barely caught the sight of the airlock before it threw him out into space. Chrome Dome had rewind and was clinging to the base of the sturdily mounted cannon itself. They were in no danger. Drift slowly pulled himself back inside against the tide of venting atmosphere. He'd gotten perhaps halfway when the airlock started to slide shut again, threatening to cut him in half. The flow of air intensified as its escape route narrowed. Drift tucked his legs up, pulling against the current with Herculean effort, but he wasn't going to make it. His groping hand caught the lip of the cannon's barrel, too little effort, too late. Suddenly, the airlock was closed, the pressure was gone, and Drift was lying on the floor on top of someone else. Sunstreaker, he said as soon as his processor stopped throwing error messages at him. As far as he could tell, Sunstreaker had yanked him inside just barely in time. There was a faint scrape at the back of one heel where the airlock had clipped his foot on the way past. It was far preferable to the alternative. Drift tried to get up. Did you see him? Sunstreaker demanded as soon as Drift started moving, hands still gripping Drift's shoulders. See who? Drift asked, trying to extricate himself. Sunstreaker wasn't about to let go. Hunter, Sunstreaker said, pulling Drift back down. Hunter, Drift mouthed. He knew the story, knew the name of the human who'd been so very temporarily Sunstreaker's partner in an experiment of madness and depravity. He was here, Sunstreaker said. I saw him run in here. No one came in here, Triff said cautiously. He waited a moment, but Sunstreaker just stared at him. I thought he was, I mean, I was under the impression that Hunter was no longer, uh among the living. He isn't! Sunstreaker shook Drift slightly, optics as wide as they could possibly go, and a crazed glint flashing in their depths. 
Sunstreaker, Drift, said evenly, I need you to let go of me. He tried to project a calming aura, keeping his body language relaxed, and motioned with one finger for Chrome Dome and Rewind to leave the room. Their footsteps, as they cleared the door, seemed to break Sunstreaker's mania. He let go abruptly and sank back. Sorry, he said, one shaking hand over his optics. I don't know what came over me. Drift climbed carefully to his feet and then helped Sunstreaker up. Are you all right? He asked, trying to establish a sense of normalcy rather than get an actual answer. I... fine, Sunstreaker said. His hands were steady and his optics had contracted back to their normal state. Where's Bob? The Insecticon Abomination's name was enough to summon it, apparently. It came bounding into the room and latched onto Sunstreaker, aft wiggling against the floor. That's a good boy, Sunstreaker murmured, hands stroking the Insecticon. More of the tension drained out of his shoulders. Are you sure you're all right? Drift asked. Yeah, yeah, I, it must have been a trick of the light, Sunstreaker said. Too many shadows, not enough recharge time. Okay, Drift said cautiously. If you see Hunter again, I want you to come to me immediately. He could handle a ghost. If nothing else, he could use the great sword on it and exercise it with the energy of the living. Yes, sir, Sunstreaker said. And get some rest. Drift had no idea how long Sunstreaker had been aboard the relic, working on whatever it was he had been assigned to do. But Drift himself had been on shift long enough to want a break, and Sunstreaker had been there for a fair chunk of time longer. Yes, sir, Sunstreaker repeated, still absently scratching around Bob's antennae. Bob leaned against him, purring. You can find this story posted in its entirety at archiveofourown.org, along with nearly 40,000 original Transformers transformative works. Give it a read and let the author know what you thought. Comments and kudos encourage authors to keep producing their art. Please share this channel with other Transformers enthusiasts. Subscribe and you'll know when new videos are posted. As always, comments and suggestions are welcome below. If you would like to suggest a story for reading here on the Iaconian Archives, please view our video from the Archivist suggesting content, and you could hear me read some of your favorite Transformers fan fiction. From tonight's author and myself, thank you for your time and support. <laughs>